right, good morning. Welcome to the 11 o'clock hour in McQueen Baptist Church. Y'all, we just baptized a whole lot of people, so I'm really fired up. Amen. Ready to worship. I don't know what else would make you want to worship than that. seated for a moment. It's good to see y'all here this morning. Welcome to McQueenie Baptist Church. Uh, yeah, if you weren't here at 1030, I'm sorry, you really missed a wonderful baptism service. We baptized five people uh, today, and uh, next Sunday, uh, next Sunday we're going to do the same thing. I don't know how many yet, but we're going to have another baptism between the services. Hope you'll come and celebrate with those that are being baptized next Sunday. We started about, the baptism actually starts at about 1030 to 1040, and, uh, and it's over by the time the service begins. So hope you'll come and join us. All right, this morning, I want to ask you to do us one big favor. Uh, in your bulletin, you'll see the connection card. Those of you that are, have been coming here are probably getting used to this routine by now. But we're going to give you a minute and a half to fill out that connection card. And we're going to ask members, visitors, everybody. Uh, on the back of that card is a place for your prayer request. And we do take those seriously and pray for over those requests so please share whatever comments or prayer requests you have with us and then at the end of the service we'll give you further instructions about uh, how to turn those in and, and what to do with those okay so uh, if you would do that right now
Heavenly Father, Lord, we just come and we continue to worship you, God. We pray that during this time you will be exalted and you will be lifted high. Lord, we focus our hearts on you this morning. Lord, we fix our eyes on you, Jesus, the author and protector of our faith. Lord, we just love you. God, our hearts are full of gratitude this morning, and we praise you for your mercy that exceeds far more than we could ever say, God, and we could ever comprehend or understand. Lord, we praise you, God. As a church, we lift you high and we exalt you. Let's stand and worship him this morning. What love could remember no wrongs we have done? Omniscient, all-knowing, he counts not their son. Thrown into a sea without bottom or shore. Our sins, they are many, his mercy is more. Praise the Lord, his mercy is more.
Thank you for this time that we've had to worship you and to sing your praises, Lord. What a privilege it is, God. Lord, and we know there's so many things that we can do to express our gratitude, God, but the bottom line is if our heart is not in it, Lord, if our heart is not true and focused on you, God, then it doesn't mean anything. So we pray right now that you would continue to move in this place, Lord. We recognize that you are the fount of all blessings, Lord. Lord, we pray that you would just help us to understand your word this morning. Sometimes, God, we can just get confused or we can get lost in what we're reading and we don't understand, Lord, but your Holy Spirit is sent, God, to just help us. Lord, help us to interpret your scripture, God, and we thank you for our pastor. We pray right now that you would just um, rest on him, Lord, and that you would empower him to speak your word. Lord, that um, his words, Lord, would just be your words this morning. Lord, and what an honor to just be able to come into this place and come into this house and hear a word from you. Lord, we just, um, Lord, we don't take it lightly. 
We're excited. We're excited to hear from you this morning, God. We thank you again for this time. We love you and we praise you. God, we pray most of all, Lord, that you have been exalted and you've been lifted high by our worship. We ask all these things in your holy name. Amen. Testing. Now, before I begin this morning, I want to ask a, just a personal favor. Um, Don and I have a grandson, uh, our oldest grandson, the, the first you know, grandchild. And um, Daniel's going to be graduating college uh, in December, or not, yeah, this next December. And um, he has recently surrendered his life to ministry. And today, they are, he's leaving today. Uh, on a one-month-long mission trip to go to Central Asia, to a Muslim country, going to be doing ministry there. And so, um, you know, they, they leave today, and I know he's excited about that. And so I just, hey, I just want to unabashedly, you know, ask you to pray for my grandchild, okay, uh, as, he, as he goes overseas. And, um, and so as we open up this morning, um, I'd like to just do that. Heavenly Father, just pray for Daniel as he leaves on this mission trip uh, today, and I pray, God, that you would use him and those that are going uh, along in this trip, Lord, that they would uh, have a powerful experience with your presence, and Lord, that they would be able to bring the light of the gospel, the good news of Jesus Christ, to those who are sitting in darkness. We ask this in Jesus' name, amen. Speaking of darkness, how many of you love the dark? Anybody here just love being in the dark? No, I didn't think so. I, I don't really care for the dark. Bad things happen in the dark, Okay. Um, and for instance, uh, not too long ago, uh, I was going, it was, it was dark, it was night, and Donna was already asleep in bed, so I was trying to be the good husband, trying to be quiet and not turn on the lights and come in and, and you know, and get in bed. And so as I'm walking into the room, uh, I'm, I'm thinking I'm, I'm here, but I'm actually here. Okay, so I'm walking, and I, and I know I've done this before, and I see you reach down, and I find the, the footboard on the bed, so that gives me a, tells me exactly where I'm at, and from, the, from there, it's just easy right on to the bed. So I walked in, and I, I get in there, and I re lean over to find the foot, footboard of the bed, and when I do, I bang my head right on the uh, chest of drawers, because the chest of drawers were over here, and the bed was over here. So I'm just saying, bad things happen in the dark. I don't recommend trying to do things and go places in the, in, the, in the dark, okay? That's what we're going to talk about this morning. Because if that is bad, I mean, we've all had experiences where, you know, bad things have happened or we've been hurt or whatever because we're trying to find something or do something in the dark. That's bad. But let me tell you, nothing is as bad as walking in this life in the dark, in the spiritual darkness. That's what we want to talk about today. Now, we've already established as we're looking in the book of 1 John, the, the whole premise of 1 John uh, is that he wants you to know whether or not you have eternal life. That's what he says in the very last chapter. We started with that, with that, uh, that verse where he says that I, these things I write to you so that you may know that you have eternal life. And so John wants us to know that we have eternal life. And one of the things that we've already established as we began to study is that the Christian faith is an experienced faith. It's not just a set of things that we, premises that we learn. It's not just a set of rules that we know. Okay, it's not just about rituals that we learn. A relationship with God through Jesus Christ is experiential. That's why John, uh, when he says in, in 1 John chapter 1, verse 3, he says, we proclaim to you what we have seen and heard. 
We, have, we proclaim to you what we've seen with our eyes, physical things we've seen with our eyes, the things that we've heard. These things, he said, he, he said we, we, so that we may also have fellowship with us. He said, we proclaim to you what we have seen and heard so that you also may have fellowship with us. That was a little better reading, wasn't it? Huh? Did a little better job on that one. And our fellowship is with the Father and His Son, Jesus Christ. There it is. I want you to see that a walk with Jesus Christ, a relationship with Him, is all about an experienced fellowship. John is saying these things, all that the, the apostles, all that we saw and heard and the thing, mir miracles that we witnessed and all of these things, we share these things with you so that you can enter into that fellowship so that you can experience those same things. And we've, we've already preached about that and talked about that. But it is a fellowship. I want to be real clear on that. It's about being in fellowship with one another and with the Father and the Son. And that's what it's all about. So the question I want to ask this morning is this. What is the quality of life within that fellowship? Okay, if, if that's what it's about, what is the quality of life in that sh fellowship? What kind of life is it? If we say it's a shared experience, it's a shared life, it's a shared fellowship, what kind of shared experience, what kind of shared fellowship is it? That's what we want to talk about this morning. Okay? The first thing we want to say is this, it's in your notes, is that God is light. God is light. This is an important premise, I think, in looking at 1 John, especially as we go forward from here. And here's what I want you to do. I want you to do a little a mental exercise with me, okay? Because this is so important. I want you to imagine a big sign. You've got the, you, you just, you can close your eyes and you just imagine this big sign. And on the sign it says, God is light. Now, you can decorate the sign however you want to. We're not going to get into all of that. You can make it look however you want. But you've got this mental image of a sign. And the reason I'm saying that is because much of what we're going to be talking about today and in the next couple of weeks is going to be premised and based and kind of grows out of that one statement. It is so very important. And so what I'm saying is some of the things we're going to be talking about in, in the next week or two are going to be like smaller signs that hang beneath that one. Okay? Because what we're going to see in 1 John in, in this chapter is that John presents uh, some couplets. A couplet is uh, something that has two parts, right? And he, you're going to see that as we go through this, he's going to have three times he's going to say, you claim, you claim this, but. So we're going to look at each one of those, and each one is going to kind of hang beneath that idea of God is light. So here's what it says. 1 John chapter 1, verse 5 says this. This is the message we have heard from him and declare to you. God is light. In him there is no darkness at all. And in Greek, when you look at that, it's, it's a, you know, we don't use double negatives in English, but the Greeks weren't afraid to do that at all. And so really, really if you were reading this literally, it would sound more like this. It would say uh, that there is no darkness at all. No way, no how. Anyhow, well, no way. No, no way that there's any dark. In other words, God is, is clear of all darkness. There are no shadows with God. So what does that mean to us? Well, what does it mean? You know, of course, Christianity isn't the only one that talk, has, has or probably will talk about uh, God as light or, you know, the, the Egyptians worship the sun God. And we know all of that. But we're not talking about any of those things. We're talking about the, the biblical Christian view of what it means when we say that God is light. And here's the first thing, okay? The first thing is God is light so you can trust him. You can trust him. Jesus said in John 8, 12, I am the light of the world. See, if God is light, then Jesus says, I am the light of the world. That's important. I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will not walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. What do we say? God is light, and that light is then manifested through the sun. We'll talk about that in just a moment. James chapter 1, verse 17 says this, Every good and perfect gift is from above, coming down from the Father of heavenly lights, who does not change like shifting shadows. 
He doesn't change. He's not, he, you don't have to wonder what God is going to do. You don't have to wonder how God is going to re respond. He makes that very clear in his word. The God that we serve is absolutely 100% without any drawback or any takeaway. He is absolutely 100% full of integrity. He is sincere. It's not a word we often use to describe God. But God is sincere. And you know what? Here's the thing. I'm saying this, and it's almost like, you know, we're all going, yeah, yeah, God is light, God is truth, and God, there's no falsehood in him. And, and you know, light means that he is full of truth, and there's nothing hidden. And we, we can all agree on that. And yet, if that's true, why do we say things like this? Never say what you don't want to do or don't want to do to God, because if you do, then somewhere down the line, that's the very thing he's going to have you do. So that, it's kind of like don't, don't step out. Don't put yourself out there because you never know what God's going to do. He's, he may get, if you, if you step out there like that, he's going to send you on a mission to, to Africa and you're going to be over there in the, in the jungles. And I'm not doing that. So we, we tend to think that way. You know, we, another example. You know, I guess I, I, I prayed and I, God didn't do what I asked him to do. I guess I just didn't get, I probably just didn't say it right. I probably didn't use the right wording. We do the same thing when we talk about salvation. And I said, well, did you, know, did you get all the right points in your sinner's prayer? But you don't find that anywhere in Scripture, that that's how it is. No, it's all about, do you place your faith in him? That's what it's about. Remember we talked about the chair? We had the chair up on the stage, if you were here, and when we began this series, we said, you know, you can talk about the chair. You can actually believe in the chair. The chair is great, and I believe that chair structurally is strong, and it'll hold us up. It's kind of like the intro video that we see with Connor going out and, you know, looking at that chair, and he's inspecting that chair. And finally, he sits down in the chair. But I would just suggest to you that until you actually sit in the chair, all that you say about the chair doesn't really matter. It's not going to matter to you. Because what is important is your posture in relation to that chair. The chair was designed for you to sit in. Jesus came and died and suffered on the cross to pay the penalty for our sins. And salvation is simply placing your faith in what Jesus has already done. So some of you say, well, I can't even remember the prayer I prayed. Did I get it right? Did I say the right thing? It doesn't matter. The really important thing is, where are you right now? Remember that Sunday I said that the, the two important things is, are you sitting in the chair and have you placed your hand, have you placed your hand on the head of the one who has died for you? That's the really, that's the really important question. So we can trust God. He is full of light and we can trust him. The second thing is this, God is light, which means he shines on you. Light shines right? I know you're thinking, that's so profound. Light shines. I'm so glad I came to church to find out that light shines. Yes, hang with me for a second. It does shine. But that's one of the qualities of light, isn't it? That's why you call it light, because it shines. Well, I think that's very important to this passage. It says this, that, uh, that he is the light and in him there's no darkness at all. That means that his light, if you're walking with him, that means his light is shining on you. We're going to get to a little bit more about that in just a moment. The second thing, first of all, God is light. The second thing is this, light and darkness have no fellowship. There's no fellowship between light and darkness. There's no, uh, there's no uh, co coexisting, is it? In fact, how do you, how do you define light? How is it most often defined? It's the absence of darkness, right? Light is the absence of darkness. Or you could say darkness is the absence of light. It's probably more correct. Yeah. Why do we think, as the scripture says, that fellowship, that, that darkness can have fellowship with light? It doesn't prove to be true in any other area, and it doesn't prove to be true in our faith either. Listen to what it says in verse 6. He says, if we claim to have fellowship with him, that is God, and yet walk in darkness, we lie and do not live out the truth. I want you to know, John is all about getting to the truth. Getting to the truth of what salvation really is. Getting to the truth of what eternal life really involves. 
And he said, you cannot walk with, in the darkness and say that you have fellowship with the light. You see how that doesn't make sense? It just doesn't add up. So what does it mean to walk anyway? We say, well, Pastor, you're getting down to the, explaining things that we all pretty well know. Yes. But to walk means that you move. You, you move through, okay? Um, to walk means that you move through life. If you're talking in, from a biblical perspective, what kind of walk do you have? Do you walk with Jesus? Are you walking in the light? Are you walking in the dark? The question is, where are you walking? Because the truth is, everybody walks. We all walk in this life. If you go for a walk in the forest, then you are moving through. You're walking through what? The forest. And so it's a, it's a progression. If you're walking through your house, then you're moving through your house. And the house is the context in which you're walking. Now we're talking about spiritual things. We're talking about spiritual things. So to walk in darkness is to move and live in sin and disobedience. It's moving along in life in the context, walking in the context of disobedience to God. Walking in the context of I'm going to do my life my way. Walking in the context of, of if it feels good to me, I'm going to do it. If it benefits me, I'm going to do it. Walking in darkness means that you do not have the light. And many there are, the scripture actually says, here's one of those we claim. He says, if we claim, if, if your claim today is that you have fellowship with God, if your claim today is that you know him, and, and you have fellowship with him, and yet you're walking in darkness, this verse says that we lie and do not live out the truth just understand we can't we can't have a, a lifestyle and a and a habit of, of living in sin and say that we're walking with God it just doesn't it just doesn't work so my right about now I feel like some people are going wow that's really good news that's really good news because I do everything perfectly. Anybody in here just feel I'm I'm without sin, so I'm I'm in good shape. No, probably more are going. Oh, wait a minute. I'm thinking I've got I'm, that I'm saved. I'm thinking that I've got a relationship to God, but I don't think I'm kind of missing out on the sin thing. So what do you do about that? What do you say about that? Glad you asked. You guys asked some good questions. You've been asking good questions lately. Because there's another part to this verse. He says, if we claim to have fellowship with him, yet walk in darkness, we, we lie and do not live out the truth. But, verse 7, but if we walk in the light, as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Anybody in here have a, a, a sunroof on your car? Raise your hand. Everybody with a sunroof. Okay. How many of you open the sunroof very often? <laughs> Not very many. I'm, I'm wondering why we pay for sunroofs on cars because we don't rarely open them. Well, listen, we have a sunroof on, on Donna's car. My truck doesn't have a sunroof, but her car does. And sometimes when I'm out driving her car and, and the other vehicles I've had in the past that had sunroofs, I don't open it very much, but occasionally... Occasionally, I'll just roll back the sunroof. You know why? There's only one reason I do that. I do that so I can let the sunlight in, so I can let the daylight come in, so I can enjoy the, the light that's shining down on me. And, and I usually probably close it when the noise, the wind noise gets aggravating. I can't hear the radio. But anyway, that's another thing. But I, I open the sunroof to let the light shine in. What I'm saying to you this morning is this. I think what John is telling us is that we need to learn to walk through this life with the top completely down. Just so the, so the light can flood our lives as we walk, as we live this life. See, it's a journey. It's a journey. I want you to think about this. When you were saved, if you have been truly born again, if you've given your heart and your life to Jesus, 
If you've trusted him, the question is, what happens? Well, when you get saved, the Bible says you place your faith and trust in Jesus. And the moment you do that, God will send his Holy Spirit to indwell you. That's what the Bible says. The Holy Spirit comes to indwell you. And when the Holy Spirit does that, there are a number of things that happen, one of which is called regeneration. That's when the old person, the spiritual person that God created you to be that is dead is brought to life. You are reborn. That's why we talk about new birth because the spiritual person that you are is given new life. And when that new life comes, that's what we celebrated, by the way, in baptism, right? Yeah, dead in our sins but buried with Christ and raised a new creation. Because, listen, when that regeneration happens, the Bible says that your sins are all forgiven. Not because of anything that you have done, but because of what Jesus already did, right? Because he paid the price for your sins. He died for you, and your sins are forgiven. In a moment, that happens. But wait a minute. It doesn't end there, does it? That's regeneration. But then we walk through what we call sanctification. That's a growing relationship with God. That's the walk. We call it discipleship sometimes, but sanctification is the moment we're saved, we begin this walk, this journey, and it lasts the rest of our lives. And what about the sin then? Here's where the light becomes so important. Look at this, 1 John 1, 7. He says, but if we walk in the light as he is in the light, we have fellowship with one another And look at this, and the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. Now, that's not reflecting back to when you were saved. That's not reflecting back to to your regeneration that took place when you were born again. No, that's talking about an ongoing experience. Did you know that we were saved in the past, we were saved from our past sins, but we're also being saved in the present? That's, That's why it's so important that we make that commitment and we walk in the light. See, walking in the light doesn't mean we never sin. It just means that the light of God shines on it because he's shining on our lives. And as we walk through this life, we're walking with Christ, and the light of God shines in on our our lives. It's just like like, uh, Isaiah when he walked into the presence of God. He was a prophet of the Lord, and yet he walked into the presence of God, and when he was in God's presence, he said, Woe is me, for I'm a man of unclean lips, and I dwell among a people of unclean lips. We become so aware of our sin. And as we become aware of our sin, and I'm not going to dig into this passage right now today, later, we'll look at this later in, in the series. But when he says, when that happens, he doesn't tell us in this passage how that happens. He says, but the blood of Jesus, his son, purifies us from all sin. He, and John will tell us again that when that happens when we what? When we confess our sins. When we confess our sins, he is faithful and just and will forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Why do we confess our sins? Why do we feel conviction? Why do we feel guilt about sin in our lives? I'm glad you asked. (laughs) It's because the light of God is shining on us. We are walking with the light. You can't walk with the light and not be convicted about sin. So I'm not saying that that walking in darkness, that that we that know God are going to somehow slip into the darkness and slip back into the light, slip into the dark and slip back in. No, that's not the way it works. Either you're walking in this life one way or you're walking in it another. Either you're walking in darkness in which case you rarely feel much, much conviction. You rarely feel much guilt. You rarely feel much heaviness over your life because of the wrong things that you know that you do. But when you walk with God in the light, that light shines on you and it's constantly revealing the things that, were, that you want to keep in darkness, but he's shining on you. And what can you do with that except to confess and acknowledge it? And when you do, he forgives you. That's what it means to walk in the light. The light shines on our sins and the blood of Christ purifies us from all sin. Let me ask you this morning. This is the real question. Is where you are walking in life right now, is it pretty dark spiritually? Is it pretty dark morally? Is it, is it, is it flooded with right living and righteousness and 
things that are holy or is it pretty much filled with things that are dark and black and disobedient and sinful? What I want you to know this morning is if we claim, if our claim is that we walk or in fellowship with God, but we're still walking in darkness, we had better stop and evaluate our walk. So my, 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 my plea to you this morning is that if you are not walking in the light of God, if you're not walking with His light flooding your life, if, if you're not walking in this life with the roof completely open on your life, then my plea for you this morning was that you would get that right with God. Come to faith in Him. Place your faith and your trust in Him. And then begin that walk, that journey, wherever it may take you. I'll promise you this. It will be a, it will be a destination, a journey of life. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your love. We thank you, Lord, that... We thank you, Lord, that you didn't just deliver us from our sin back then and then leave us. But rather, Lord, you invite us to enter into this journey with you. And, and that as we do that, the blood of Christ that saved us is the same blood of Christ that saves us. Lord, we thank you for your forgiveness. We thank you for the joy that you give us. Lord, we pray that you would keep us ever mindful that we walk in the light. We pray it in Jesus' name. Amen. Would you stand with me as we go into this time of invitation? I don't know what God may be saying to you this morning. Maybe you're, maybe you're really questioning today. Maybe you're really questioning today that the life that you're now living is one really being lived in the light. The truth is, I can't answer that for you. Nobody else can. Only God can answer that for you. So if you're not sure, pray about it. I'll be glad to talk with you about it. But now is the time to do something about it. So if you don't know him this morning, I'm encouraging him, inviting you to come. I'd love to pray with you right here at the front, right now. You could walk out of here a different person today. But whatever it is God is telling you to do right now is your time. As we worship together, let's do so with our whole heart.
You can be seated for a few moments before we dismiss this morning. First of all, uh, the, the uh, connection cards that you filled out at the beginning of the service, if you would please take those out and just pass those to the inside aisle, uh, we'll pick them up. We appreciate that so much. Thank you. Thank you for filling those out. It's, all, it's really good for, uh, to know who's attending and who's here and, and know a little bit about you. Thank you so much. Uh, today, uh, we, are, we have the Mother's Day pictures ready. I want, to know, want you to know they turned out beautifully. Ladies, you look, look great. Uh, great to take those beautiful pictures. They are available now. They're on the table at the back of this auditorium as well as out in this foyer. There's a table out there. So you can pick up your Mother's Day pictures from last week uh, today. Uh, also, uh, we did our baptism today. That was wonderful. Church council meeting is today at 5. Let me tell you a little secret. Those of you that are in church council, church council is everyone who is a leader of a, uh, like a chairperson of a committee, leader of a ministry, like the worship ministry, like that. Every, the leaders are invited to come at 5 o'clock today. But I want to let you know, this is going to be, as, as much as I can do it, it's going to be a short meeting. We have also a volleyball tournament starting up at 5.30 this afternoon. And I tell you, I've already heard some trash talking. I have. It's happening. So there's gonna, it's a family volleyball tournament this evening uh, starting at 5.30. We're going to endeavor to get our, our, our church council meeting done quickly in time uh, to enjoy the volleyball tournament. Also, uh, children's ministry. Just to let you all know, we're really in need of some assistance right now. Uh, we have a number of our children's workers have been working so diligently, some of them all the way through the COVID crisis that we've, we've gone through. And uh, some, some are just needing a little break uh, for the summer, and, and then we're just really needing to expand our children's ministry to begin with. So here's my plea. If you're here today and you would be interested in working with our children's ministry, with our Sunday school, children's Sunday school, our kids' Sunday school meet uh, at the uh, 9.30 hour. That's when they're in Sunday school. And so if you would be willing to help out with that, then uh, I would just really ask you to talk to uh, Christy Steuben. Is Christy in here? There she is back there. Look, everybody look. Wave, Christy. Okay. That's the lady you need to talk to, and uh, she would be glad to. And if you have questions, maybe just want to ask some questions about it, you know, and, and then she would be glad to fill you in and, and kind of let you know what's needed. And so that we can really kind of build up our, our children's ministry where it needs to be. I think that's all of the announcements that we have today. Just, oh, yes, Awana, thank you. Thank you. There it is, right here on my bullet. Thank you. Thank you for reminding me. This Wednesday night, we're having Awana Awards. What is that? Well, our children work all year long in Awana program, and they, they make have advancements. And so uh, Wednesday night, we're going to have our award ceremony. We come and support the kids. We're not having Wednesday night Bible study for the adults this Wednesday. We're going to join the kids in the auditorium, celebrate with them their accomplishments, okay? I think it's really important that we do that. So I'd love to have you come Wednesday night uh, and join us for that. That will be at 6.30. That's Wednesday night at 6.30 right here in the auditorium. Now, I think that's all of the announcements that I have for today. So thank you all so much for coming and being a part of what God is doing here at McQueen Baptist Church. We love you and appreciate you more than you will ever know. Let's all stand together. As we uh, get ready to leave this morning, I'm going to ask Randy Philly if he would to lead us in our closing prayer. Amen.